Jesus, salvation Amen. in our possession. Right. Without the blood, there is no remission of right. sin. Aren't you glad God didn't leave us in a bad spot? Right. Amen. In the Word of God, Gospel according to Luke chapter 14. Stand with me for the reading of the Word of God. Just two verses of Scripture for the thought that God placed upon my heart. preaching this morning on the greatest cost. The greatest cost is cost of salvation. Right. People look at it and say, well, preacher, that's free. No, it isn't. Right. It's free to you. Right. But the greatest cost, more than heaven could afford, right. is poured out. We need to consider. I read this verse several years ago and I've never gotten it off of my mind or my heart when it comes to the birth of Jesus and the crucifixion. In verse 27, words from the Lord Jesus, And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish right. it? Amen. God put the plan of the cross together before time began. Amen. He counted the cost and in the mind of God, he did not choose the cheapest route. Amen. He chose the route that was so expensive, we could never understand it. Right. Amen. To we stand in his presence. But aren't you glad for the words of Jesus yes. on the cross? Amen. It is finished. Amen. Amen. He finished. But he started, and that makes us debtors. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you for the power that we feel in this room with your presence. Thank you for bringing your people together on this special Sunday, Lord, that we can hear from you. I pray that you would anoint my lips of clay and help me to say nothing more nor less than and be perfect in your plan and your will for what people need to hear. And then, God, may you do your ministering to our hearts. I pray as we ponder our hearts upon the cost of our salvation, that, God, that it will make us more thankful, that it will make us better servants, better witnesses, better Christians, because you paid price we can't it's beyond our wildest dreams or imagination bless your servant your service and your word with your power in jesus name amen please be seated now they say salvation is the free gift of god the greatest gift anyone can ever receive but it was not a cheap gift it was the most expensive gift heaven could come up with. Amen. Which of you that intend to build a tower sitteth not down first and count the cost? Uh, you know what I've learned about things that are free? Things that are free, we, we seem to take them for granted. You go to Arbor Freight and the little coupon and they give you a little flashlight and you see a ton of them in garage sales. <laughs> Just
this free stuff. Throw it aside. I want you to know that anything free that doesn't cost anything usually isn't worth anything. But Jesus Christ and that gift of salvation to us, I want you not to just think about how proud you are to have the gift. He has the birthday. We got the gift. That's right. The most expensive gift heaven could afford. Amen. So rather than just preaching about the gift we got, I want us to think about the price that was paid for what we have. This will make your salvation worth a whole lot more when you think about that. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Amen. Amen. Sin is like the crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. Because of the price of the very blood from the body of God himself to redeem our souls and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So appreciate the gift, but look at look at the price. Have you considered the cost of your soul? The cost of salvation that was paid? And are you willing to pay a price? Boy, that's a good question. Cost and price is just about the same thing. But the price is what you pay. You pay nothing for salvation itself. But the cost. It will cost you to be a Christian. I begin to think. You need not turn there, but you can all quote John 3.16. I want us to ponder these things upon our hearts. Number one, what it costs God the Father. For God so loved the world, that's the souls of the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, which is Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loved the souls of the world enough to allow his little boy to be conceived in the manner that it was. Those of you that's had children know how precious that it is. But let me ask you a question. If you had one little boy and that's all you could ever possibly have. And you loved him with all of your heart. Would you give him to go through what Jesus Christ did to save these wicked, sin-filled people by the millions? Would you give your son your only son. And God, can you, can you just grasp in your heart how he felt? He must have been so proud of that little baby growing up and going into those little two and four year olds and getting on up into the junior department and up into the teenage years and yet without sin. Proving in life what a perfect, sinless, priceless little boy he saw grow up into a man that was perfect. You can't say that about anybody else that you're perfect from birth 
until you're a man. And knowing that how he was born, that the heart of God is Jesus fulfilled and said those words, it is finished. The plan God can conceived in his heart was finished. He finished it for all. He finished it and brought salvation to all of the past that by faith believed in him. He brought salvation to the thief upon the cross that put his faith in him. If you be a king, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He knew that Jesus Christ was a king. And Jesus said, Verily, I say unto you, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And that's when they both gave up the ghost and went down to the regions of paradise. Only for a short time. That upper compartment is where the holding section was for the Old Testament saints. And when that resurrection came, the graves burst open. Bodies came forth. Up went paradise. Right. Those regions of hell were still there with the bodies of Cain and all the Christ rejectors from the moment they died is in that place called hell. <clears throat> and to think that anyone would be foolish enough to turn down the most expensive gift that anybody could ever provide. Right. And that gift came from God. Amen. God's heart was broken. But God's love for the souls of humanity is why he gave up his little boy to die upon the cross. <clears throat> he was born to die. Right. Amen. Illustrated by the wise man that presented his gift of myrrh, which is an embalming fluid. The pre presentation of gold. And if you had all the gold in the world and all the wealth of a, of a million worlds, you would have the value probably as one grain of sand upon the universe or less. What should a prophet of man if he gained the whole world right. and lose his own soul? Mm. Or what would a man give in exchange for his soul? Mm. So God paid a price. And the Lord Jesus paid a price. In John chapter 10 verses 9 and 10, Jesus said, The thief has come to steal and to kill and right. destroy. But he said, I am the door. If by me any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall not go in and out and find pasture. He said, I did not come to destroy or to kill like the thief. But I came that you may have life That's right. and have it more abundantly. Yeah. That's what Jesus said. Christ came for. And what did he give? Well, just think about his birth in a manger and in a stable. You think about the fact that he was born in a carpenter's home. A carpenter's today made great money, but not back in Jesus' day. That was the poor. That was the poor vocation back in Jesus' day. He grew up not having things like we know. He grew up 
in his adult life, all I read about him having was a robe and sandals. He went out into the ministry and he called the disciples that left their lucrative fishing boats and their livings. And they left their beautiful homes that they had built after days of ministry, one of the saddest things in the human form of Jesus, all of the disciples went back to their own homes. But Jesus had not a home to pillow his head. A rock was his pillow. The stars from the sky of heaven was his blanket. He did not take from anybody. He did nothing but give. Right. Give. Give. You can give. Right down to the last drop of blood in his body. Right. Because of the crucifixion scene. When that Roman soldier speared the side of Jesus, out came blood and water. Right. The water oozed out because all the blood was shed. He didn't give one drop for anybody. He gave it all for all. Some songwriter got sentimental and said, one drop was just for me. No. One drop wasn't just for anybody. There's not enough drops to go around by the billions. He shed it all. Right. Amen. He shed it all for you and all for me. <coughs> and that blood has never lost its value Amen. or its power Amen. Right. to save or to keep your soul That's right. out of eternal hell. Amen. How do I know that he started this good work within me to save me? I've never doubted his power to keep me. The blood never loses his power. And you can't be unborn from a family. When you're born by the blood of Jesus into his family, you may be a disobedient child, but you'll always be a child. A child oftentimes may get a whipping. You know, he believed in corporal punishment. Amen? I don't think he calls his corporal punishment spankings. And I know he doesn't call it time out. <laughs> Amen? You don't want a whipping from God. God the Father loved him so much and he loved the Father that he performed all of that. And then he went back finally to the right hand of God the Father. His disciples missed him. They, they wept because of his absence. They got so discouraged. Some of them went, even went back to fishing till Jesus came and, in that glorified body and stood on the seashore and called them together to let them know that everything is still all right. Amen. 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 Right. You can still follow me. But they watched him as he ascended. And the angels from heaven said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into the, into the sky? This same Jesus, as you've seen him go, is going to come in like manner and stand upon the Mount of Olives. Because that's where he left. That's where he's coming back to. Right. Our king is coming. Right. We need to prepare for that.
But he sent us the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. To indwell us. And uh, there'll, there'll have to be a message coming later because my time is running out. But let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit. He indwells us. He has to put up with you. Yeah. Amen. Right. And most Christians don't even realize he's in there. Or who he is. They want to mysticize him. And act like he's just some kind of a spirit somewhere far off. The Holy Spirit of God is indwelling every believer. Right. He's in you. You take him wherever you go. Amen. His ears are open to everything you say. He leads and guides and reproves and corrects and instructs. And he's disbelieved in, taken for granted, ignored, unappreciated, and he's locked inside of you and me. One day when he who now letteth will be taken away and he's released from the indwelling of Christians don't care how they treat him you're going to understand something. He is going to say I'm glad to be out of here. We'll be gone on. But that power of the Spirit of God is Jesus he teaches you. He draws you. He empowers you. It's through His power that indwells the very person of Jesus in you is what gives you the power. That power is backed up by the finished works of Jesus Christ right. and His shed blood that will never lose any of the power. Power to save. Then I think about our situations and I think about our forefathers who gave their blood for the book. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs. Look at how all of the, the apostles of Jesus Christ died. The sacrifices we made. And yet now we have evolved into a world that's completely shut him out of Christmas time. We've involved in a pleasurable, unbelievable, with magical, unbelievable things like our technologies. We heard some of the beautiful technologies here this morning. <laughs> Amen? By the means of the tell star. How's the, how are we going to see him when he comes? Because of television and the tell star. Every eye shall behold him. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. So as we look at the price God paid, the price that Jesus paid, the price the Holy Spirit of God paid, the price of our forefathers with their blood shed to stand for the truth. There was a time witches were executed. Today they're washed by the devil's crowds. The rights of all those Pressing for their own rights has taken the rights of Christians away. Every time somebody else gets uh, away from God, gets their right met, something's taken away from us. And eventually they're trying to get it where we'll not be able to speak from the pulpit or speak from the Bible because the Bible is offensive. <clears throat> 
but the Bible is true. And I'm here to tell you that nobody in the world needs to hear lies. Right. The only truth you'll ever hear is the truth that's read from the sacred pages of the very Word of God. There's a price that we must pay to stand for God after all the costs of heaven for our salvation. It should not be that we do not have to pay any price. We do not have the right to do what we want and to choose what we want. We don't have a right to be obedient to God. Amen. And that disobedience is what brings an awful price. Have you counted the cost? Are you willing to pay a price? People that shut Jesus Christ out of their life, they're going to pay a cost and a price they would have never believed right. when it comes to eternity. Mm -hmm. Christians that live their life on their own and shut Jesus and the leadership out of God and shut Him away are robbing themselves every single day of blessings and blessings and blessings. There's a price to pay because one day we're going to stand face to face. I don't know how anybody could reject Jesus Christ. How, how could they? How could anybody? Turn down the Son of God. Do you know how how close you are to heaven? Every person, I can tell you approximately how close to heaven they are. About 18 inches to the normal person. From the heart to the head. That's how close to heaven you are. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they've ever considered how close to hell they are. Right. Every time you hear of an unexpected tragedy, a tanker overturns. <coughs> Tsunami hit last night from an earthquake from somewhere in Indonesia. Twenty-two. I think it was 22 people drowned. But as that wave from a tsunami came across that little island in Indonesia, I heard on the news this morning that they didn't have a tsunami warning system for that little island to be warned to save their life. I'm telling you, warnings are very good things. You need a warning. We need a warning. There's a price to pay. A great price to pay. I'll tell you this so winning story and I'm finished. Pastoring in Charleston, West Virginia, a little lady in my church came up and she said, um, uh, there's a little Methodist preacher. She's a, a wife of Methodist preacher. Her husband died. She's in the hospital. She's one of my relatives. And said, uh, my, uh, I think my nephew Danny asked me if I knew someone from the church that would go pray with his mother. And I told him, I, I would ask you. I said, sure, I'll go pray with for his mother. I got her name and went down to the hospital in Charleston went in and this little lady was racked with pain. <coughs> you see, God can still he, he's a prayer answering God. Right. Amen. And here's this little Methodist minister's wife laying in bed racked in pain. And I'd ask the person that told me Danny asked if somebody would go to well, 
Why don't he go? I said, well, he, he, he's not right with God. He, he feels like his prayer wouldn't get no higher than his head. His mother's suffering. He wants somebody there to pray. So I went, introduced myself. She was so grateful I came. And she was in pain. And I took her little hand and I prayed that God would touch her body. And guess what? God touched her body. Before I left her bedside, she was smiling. Amen. The pain was gone. Daddy came in that evening and she made a phone call. And the word spread. Uh, some preacher, he came in here, prayed for me. And God took my pain right away. I, I feel great. And Daddy was impressed. He asked the lady at church, he said, that was your pastor. Yeah. So the next Sunday, which was just a few days later, Dan and his whole family came and sat in the back row of my church. Hmm. I preached a salvation message. And uh, they didn't come forward. But I preached hellfire and brimstone. Mm -hmm. Right. And the illustration that I used because Danny was the sergeant of the state police in Charleston, West Virginia. And, I was, and down in West Virginia, those little mountain roads so narrow and the hills and the mountains, that's the only place that you'll blow your horn at your tail light as you're going around the curve. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, if you go off, it's a long way. No little narrow roads. And I remember, as an illustration, I, I, I said, you, when you're driving down these little narrow roads, and you're going 55 miles an hour in your lane, and somebody's coming 55 miles an hour in this lane, I said, and all of a sudden, if one of those car, uh, cars would, avert, would just uh, kind of drift left or right, I said, there's, a, there's about a four foot space. I said, and as you're riding down these roads, unsaved, I said, you're riding Four foot from hell. Yeah, right. That came from the Lord, not me. They didn't come forward, but I got a call from Danny's wife on Tuesday during the day and said Danny will be home this evening. As a matter of fact, he just came in the door. He didn't even go to work. She said, could you come see him? He is really upset. I said, sure. I went over on a on Tuesday. And the big sergeant of state police sitting in his soft, comfortable chair with tears streaming down his face. I said, Danny, what's the matter? He said, it's what you said, preacher. I said, what do you mean? It's what you said. He said, you know, I'm a, ser I'm a sergeant in the state police. He said, I go up and down these roads all the time. I have picked hundreds of bodies up off of this, these roads. He said, I, I, every time I'm driving to work, uh, all I can see, that, that, that line in the middle of the road, now I'm driving, and he said, all I can hear is four foot from hell, four foot from hell, four foot from hell. He said, preacher, I'm not ready to die lost. Amen. And I led him to the Lord. <clears throat> he became a deacon, and now I understand he's in the ministry. Amen. But he asked me to come to the state police graduation and say the prayer. And what he told me, he says, I tell my men before they go out every single day, there's one weapon you never want to leave behind. And that's Jesus Christ as your Savior. Yeah. Because you need Him every moment yeah. of every day. The 
there's a price to pay if you die lost without God. There's a great price to pay if you don't serve Him. Right. Amen? Amen. Let's stand for the invitation. After our invitation is over, I'm going to ask you all the will to move over to these two sections right here as we prepare for communion, okay? After the invitation is finished. Lord, I pray you'd bless the Word of God as we count the cost of what it cost heaven for our salvation. And Lord, I hope we will inventory our own heart as we're getting ready to prepare for communion. To thank you for your shed blood and your broken body. That price that you paid for our soul. I pray that you'd help this invitation, Father. If there's any in this room that needs your presence and forgiveness or whatever it may be. I pray, dear Lord, they come today before communion and get it all settled. Give them victory now, I pray in your name. Amen. As we sing.